On today's show. Is PG in the MVP conversation? Does Draymond Green need to take more shots? And did the Raps get away with one? We debate the Rockets' three-point record, the fastest player in the league, and which celeb would be best on the call. And James Harden dances his way into a brand new edition of the Meme Team. It's Thursday, December 20th. The starter starts now! Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number 7 and Tennessee Honey. I'm J.E. Skeets, that's Tass Mellis, that's the Aussie Lee Ellis, and over yonder, well, that's the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. hey yo! Hey, yo! TK, what's popping, man? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag The Starters, and guys, we've seen a lot of strange hats in the NBA over the years, but I don't think we've seen anything quite like what Thabo Cephalosha had on last night. He said this was Impala fur, also said you had to kill the Impala to wear this. I don't think he was joking, but maybe he was. Nonetheless, it distracted Donovan Mitchell from his own post-game interview, so you know it's unique. And it brings us to today's question. What is the weirdest NBA headwear that you can remember? You can go a lot of different ways with this. For instance, maybe you think it's on court, like that season when the New York Knicks had a couple of head wounds that they fixed by just putting a giant bandage and a headband on it, made guys look like revolutionary war heroes. Or maybe you think it's one of Carmelo Anthony's off-court hats. I always like the icy top. Or perhaps you think it's one of the weird hats that we've worn throughout the years on the show. That's literally the only time Skeets has had a hat on in five and a half years. But we want to hear from you, so let us know on Twitter what's the weirdest NBA headwear. Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get those tweets in. On tonight's show, we're going to debate who truly is the fastest player in the league. We got a brand new edition of the meme team. We got very solid play. But we start here with a little true or false. My man TK's got those true or false questions, and we will debate the correct answer. Let's do it. Paul George had another monster game last night, going for 43 points, 12 rebounds, and seven assists in the Thunder's win over the Kings. It's his second 40-point game of the month. He's leading the league in total steals for the best defense in the NBA, and the Thunder are second in the West. Guys, true or false, Paul George is in the MVP conversation. It is true. How many guys can be in the conversation <laughs> is the question. That's right. Either way, he is up there. I think he's finally back to his old self. Because after that gruesome injury in 2014, that was only his fourth season. I thought he was on his way to an MVP type of player. Yeah. And now he's averaging highest points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks of his career. He is the best offensive and defensive player on his team that is second in the Western Conference. I think he looks like that PG that was battling LeBron in the Eastern Conference way back then. And I think Russell Westbrook understands that this guy – is the best offensive option on his team. Because with Russell's understanding, he's got to take a little bit of a step back and his shots have come down and, and Pauls have come up and that's why they're knocking on the one seed in the West. Yeah. yeah, he's had the injury come back from, but he's also now a second year with Oklahoma City and there's no Carmelo Anthony there. I'm not blaming Carmelo, but last year when they were together, they didn't really look like they were working all that well. It was like, you have a shot, then I'll have a shot. Right now, Paul George knows, hey, I'm as good as I was before I had that knee injury, where he was even in the MVP conversation then. And I think this is fantastic news for Billy Donovan and Russell Westbrook and the Thunder fans because they're finally realising how to get the most out of that second star player, which we didn't see after Kevin Durant left. And Russell Westbrook is looking at him going, hey, this guy is capable of doing things by himself. I don't need to set up everything. I don't need to be involved in everything. And Paul George is responding. And then on the defensive end, he's bringing that energy which is really uh, fueling their defense. And when your star player and your leaders do that, everyone else in the team becomes a better player yeah. for it because they see that the, the, the leadership and the, the role they're playing. 100% uh, true. I agree with you guys. He's in the MVP conversation. But to circle back to that, <laughs> how many people can be in this conversation? <laughs> we got to figure this out. Let's do it right now. I say it's like six or seven. Now, mm. tell me if you disagree. And the reason why I say six or seven, think about when you go out for a big group dinner, <laughs> right? There's like 10, 12, 14 of you. You get that big, long table. Mm. It's not a great conversation. Nice. It's a conversation with four people down here, four people down, hey, what's going on down there? What are you guys talking about? How's your apps? You loving it? Mm. Cool. That's not a conversation. But if you get a nice six or seven person circular table, that's a conversation mm. where everybody's talking about <laughs> the same thing. So mm. my whole point is PG's at that table. That six or seven person okay, table, right. the circular one. Yeah. Who and he's chose there. the restaurant? He's there with Giannis. Well, Matty O, our producer, <laughs> chose the restaurant. Everybody knows that. Giannis is there. Paul George is there right now. I think Jokic is there. LeBron is there. And then those last two or three spots, that's the question. Anthony Davis, Kawhi, Harden. You don't want to be late to this dinner. One of those dinner. warriors. Anthony Davis better be there. You don't want to be late to this dinner is exactly right. Yeah. But yeah, I think PG's Steph. at that table. 
good acoustics. Maybe you go eight. Maybe you can Maybe, extend this eight that's if it, that's you can it, hear it. each other. Yeah, you're you're getting there. But he's they're the best defense in the league. He's yeah, got yeah, he's got to sure. be there. And yeah, Jokic is close. I don't know if Jokic is sitting at the table quite yet. Oh, I'll tell I think you what, if the right Nuggets now. win 60 yard games, oh, he's he, there. Right, ne- right now, he's sitting there. If he's got to go move his car or something like that and he's got to get up, someone maybe will take a spot. But let's get to the next one. Yeah, right. let's just hope that table has a lazy Susan. <laughs> Moving on, Draymond Green is just 7 for 34 from 3 so far this season. Last night, the Jazz were pretty much just leaving him open, daring him to beat them from outside. Afterwards, Kevin Durant admitted to reporters that the Warriors need Draymond to be aggressive looking for a shot. True or false? Draymond Green needs to score more. This is true because what? no, what? it's because uh, remember what the Warriors did to the Grizzlies a couple of years ago in the playoffs when they were down. They left Tony Allen, yep. and it worked perfectly. I know this is regular season; there's plenty of time. But Draymond Green's confidence right now, shooting the ball, has been shot. He he doesn't look confident. He doesn't step into those shots. Now he after the game was saying, "Great, leave me open. I'm going to start knocking these in." Yeah. But until he does, this is a way to at least weaken the Warriors' right. offense. Play, play off of him and if try he's, and double if he's one shooting, yep. If he's shooting, then that means Durant's not, Clay's not, and Steph's not, which is what you want. Leave him open. Let him have those shots while he's shooting like so badly from three-point range. I think he will get it together, and I think he will start knocking down shots. But while he's not, that's at least some weakness the Warriors have. So you've got to try to exploit anything you can against them. Well, he's got to at least be a threat. Yeah. You, even if he's not firing from three, because you... Yeah, if you're the defense, you just say, hey, we'll take away their three best offensive players and let him shoot. But at least he can drive and set guys up. He has to do that because they also have another non-score in the starting lineup. Kevon Looney is starting. You can't have two guys who aren't scoring. Yeah, he, he's got to get some more shots. The six shots per game is not good enough. He can drive. He can handle. He can get to the rim if there's space. The other guys are just shooting a lot this season. Play top as, they, as they should, though. But yeah, but this is, this is more than Draymond Green has ever played with. This is a career high for Clay. Steph's high since he won MVP, and Kevin Durant a high for a very long time since he joined uh, Golden State and further back. Trey's got to be a better offensive I, player. I, he, I he guess does. I sort of disagree with you. I mean, it's early still in the season for the most part. I do believe he's going to be a better than a 20% three-point shooter. That all said, he's not. he hasn't been a great three-point shooter for the last couple of years when they win titles. Mm-hmm. But... I get that you want him to be a threat, but like, what are we sort of doing? Are we making him a scapegoat suddenly? Is he taking on like the Chris Bosh, no, he's an you know, Kevin Love role where you're like, oh, okay, we're struggling, we lost a game, okay, maybe you should shoot more? Or are we talking about, is he a Tony Allen, Andre Robertson type where like, okay, we can just leave him? Like, they to get- me, Draymond Green's never going to lack confidence. Well, he is right he now, is. I don't, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, but he's talking about, he keeps saying, and maybe this is the way he gets himself going, like, yeah, leave me open. I'll, I'll continue yeah. to shoot, or I'm going to start shooting. I think he will. He is coming back from injury as well. It's a part of it here. But even before the worried. injury, he wasn't shooting all that well. It just seems weird that his shot at this stage of his career has, has kind of left him, because he was developing a pretty consistent He was shot. a 38% three-point That's shooter yeah, yeah, three or four years ago, and then but 30%, 30%, now 20%. My yeah. point is, if you are defending the Warriors, if you can... Always have a player on one of those big three, and Draymond's the guy who's left open to, to, to shoot those three. You live with that. Mm-hmm. You absolutely live with that right now. If he starts knocking them down, then it changes things. But while he's not, that gives you at least some sort of opportunity against the Warriors to not have those other guys go for 40 or 50 Well, don't points. worry about it. Demarcus Cousins is going to be put into yeah. the starting lineup, and then Draymond could be the one guy that doesn't <laughs> yeah. shoot on the team. Maybe that makes sense. All right, final one here, Trey. All right, a fun game between the Raptors and Pacers ended in controversial fashion. Down three, two and a half left. Bogdanovich gets the inbound, rises the shoot, and flails. But wait, did OG Ananobi get a little arm there? Maybe a so. Little. Yeah. <laughs> True or false? The Raptors got away with one. He got a lot of arm. <laughs> yeah, and when the ball just... goes straight up like that, it's a smackdown. Yeah. That's what it was. You could see his reaction, too. He was like, I didn't do it. And he's like, oh, uh, I didn't get yeah, yeah. it. Pulls his hands up. But yeah. What's interesting to me, if, say, Bogdanovich hits that shot, they would have reviewed it to see if it was a three. So why did, why did they then review that when it's... Oh, oh that's a slippery slope. I know it's a slippery slope. Come on, Jeff Van Gundy. I know, but... I don't know. We, no one thinks that wasn't a foul. That was a clear foul. Yeah, they missed and it. And that was potentially a game-tying score that then maybe the Pacers go on and win an overtime. They lost by a heartbreaker the night before, again, under controversial oh, Okay, that's fair, but yeah, the, with Larry Nance throwing yeah. Oladipo out of the way. But they've put themselves in this position both of these games. They scored 11 points yeah. in the fourth quarter. Some of that was the Raptors' defense. Some of that was the Pacers just not hitting shots and going away with, with what was working earlier in that game. So, yeah, they get down to these situations where, oh, maybe they, they, that's a bad whistle on both of those games. But they shouldn't have been in that situation. They should have ran away yeah. with both of those games. Listen, this was a makeup call for six years ago. 
though, when Ed, <laughs> Ed Malloy missed Andrea Bargnani going up. It, it was a very I similar situation. This. Okay, so this is Ed Malloy is right here watching Boyan Bogdanovich get hit. Okay, it's right in front of you. You saw it. Hey, you're making up for this call that you didn't give the Raptors a long time ago. Andrea Bargnani gets the ball here in the corner. Same thing, he gets hacked big time. Ooh. The referees, the officials apologized a couple days later. This was back before the L2M, the last two minute reports. They actually came out and reported that he missed it. Ed Malloy, I mean, he, he made it up. It took a while. Six yeah. years later, yeah. Ed Malloy never forgets. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie, from a Raptors fan. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to debate who's the fastest player in the league. Darren Fox, Westbrook, somebody else. A whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Hey, let's play some fill in the blank. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. The Rockets shoot more threes than any team in the league. And last night against the Wizards, they made more than any team in history, setting a new record for three-pointers made in the game at 26 as five different Rockets hit at least three threes. Guys, fill in the blank. Hitting 26 threes in a game is blank. I wrote elementary, my dear starters. Mm. They were playing the Washington Wizards. Yes. Oh and the Washington Come Wizards, on. they looked at the standings before this game and they saw Houston's 11th in the Western Conference. We're not going to try against those guys. They try against the good teams. They came out and laid an egg. Yeah. That's how you hit 26 they, threes. They laid a ton of eggs out there. I went with awful D. Because, <laughs> I love eggs. Uh, I know you do. You and yeah. Rick Fox love eggs yeah. more than anyone. I know. Uh, Fred Katz did the stats, uh, and the Rockets last night shot 24 of 47 on open to wide open threes. Yeah. 47 attempts were open to wide open. There was a lot of corner threes from the Rockets how do without you, a guy near <laughs> How do you not pick up a player at some point and go, okay, let's just stay on our man here and even give up twos rather than give up uncontested threes like that. So that was just an awful... I mean, Washington are having a dreadful season and that just sort of highlights it, really. I went with uh, hitting 26 threes in a game is... That's so Rockets. I was going to say Raven. Remember Raven? Oh, sure do. Yeah. Olivia. But what I liked about this is, I mean, this is the Rockets doubling down on who they are. They only took one shot in this entire game that wasn't in the paint or from three, mm. one, which is mind boggling. But I also like them having the record now to get it back. It didn't really ever feel right to me that the Cavs had taken over the single game yeah. three pointers made record. Rockets did have it a couple years ago. Now they got it back. I like that. It feels to me like it's gotta be the Rockets, maybe the Warriors with Curry and Clay going bonkers one game. But the, the Rockets are happy. They've, they've got a little winning streak going and Chris Paul, this was his probably his best offensive performance in about a month as well. That offense is, you know, firing once again. So that was a big win for them, even if it was against the lowly Wizards. <laughs> All right, next one here, Trey. The Kings, De'Aaron Fox, recently told Yahoo's Chris Haynes that he is definitely the fastest player in the league, Russell Westbrook included. But last night, he played against Russell Westbrook, and when Westbrook blew by him to the hoop, Westbrook turned to the bench and yelled, I'm too fast! Fill in the blank, guys. The fastest player in the NBA is blank. Yeah, Lee? It, it is De'Aaron Fox. I agree. And that is such a classic Russell Westbrook thing to do, to yell out to the bench, I'm too fast. <laughs> he gets, in, gets into a little contest with a guy over who's the fastest, like in the schoolyard. But uh, it is, it's De'Aaron Fox. He, his burst of speed is uh, quicker, than, quicker than Westbrook. Westbrook is fast, but De'Aaron way quicker. And, and look, Westbrook is 30. Uh, John Wall is 28. Both of those guys have had knee injuries mm. and, and concerns, obviously, with their lower legs before. De'Aaron Fox is... He just turned 21. I think it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Star Fox. Mm. Um, so he's got the young legs. I think it is Fox. I don't think you need to overthink this. You got someone? Mm. I put John Wall because we're piling on him a little bit. Uh, and because there's such a juxtaposition from him going really slow, which he does a lot, and him going really fast. So it looks faster than it is. Fair enough. Yeah. I think Oladipo, I think, is shockingly quick. Yeah. Ish Smith, although he's up there a little bit in age, he's very, very fast. So there's you lots know who to the pick fastest from. in NBA history is? Who? Speedy Claxton. Nice. Final <laughs> one. <laughs> nice. That was a joke, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some marvelous news for all you Billy Crystal heads out there. That's right, the City Slickers star and longtime Clippers fans will be the color analyst alongside play by play man Ralph Waller for the Clips. January 31st game against the Lakers. He's gonna be doing the whole game. Fill in the blank. A celebrity you'd like to have on the broadcast is blank. <laughs> what, a, what a surprise. Ellen. 
Oh, I didn't even great. see it. I know that's what it was. Yeah, yeah she, uh, she's talking about maybe retiring from her show, so she needs a new gig. Imagine her coming out to the start of the game, dancing down the aisles, getting everyone hyped up. <laughs> yeah. She's she done dancing. <laughs> she hasn't danced in years. Yeah, but she could bring it back. You know, this is mm. what basketball needs. And also, she's had a lot of uh, basketball players on her show, LeBron, Kobe, Steph, so she's familiar with the league. Well, I'm going to go with uh, somebody who loves basketball so much he tweets about it every single possession. That's why I want him on the call, <laughs> so he can stop tweeting. He just tweets, he tweets play-by-play. Yeah. They're not true. good play-by-play. -play. No. It's basket from John Wall. Yeah. Cool. It's very weird. <laughs> right. But he's hilarious. He is hilarious, so he'd be great. I'm going to go with Jeff Probst, mm. the uh, the host of Survivor. And the reason why is Jeff Probst, he literally does play for play-by-play -play for people like making a puzzle or running in sand. And he somehow makes it entertaining. So if he can do that, I think he could do a decent job on play-by-play -play mm. for an NBA game. But let's hear from you. Which celeb would you like to see on the broadcast call? When we return... We got a brand new edition of the meme team. Every week we scour the internet to bring you the meme team, our favorite weird and wacky moments from the past seven days. We start hot. Number five is great. Channing Fry out of the three-point line. Play starts well, but then he passes it to the bench. Uh-oh, whoops. And then his former teammate, LeBron James, he clowned him. Oh, good move, Channing. Oh, what the f What was that? <laughs> Best part, though, Fry then created a meme. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Channing Fry. Skip feed in midair, just Colin Sexton, but the problem is he's got a warm up on. <laughs> oh, Channing's gonna hear about that. Way to go, Channing. Uh, Woj had Twitter going crazy last weekend, tweeting out Washington, Phoenix, and Memphis had agreed in principle on a deal that would include Wayne Selden and Dylan Brooks headed to the Suns. Oh, one minute later, clarify Marshawn Brooks, not Dylan. And then about 40 minutes later, deal's dead. All right, we can't figure <laughs> out which Brooks it is. Deal's over. People love this, of course. You versus the guy they thought they were trading for. Marshawn on the left, Dylan on the right. It was like a game of broken telephone. <laughs> I don't know which Brooks it is by the end of it. And uh, yes, rest in peace to that three-team trade. Would have been a good one. Grizzlies, Suns, and Wizards. At number three, not sure if you heard, but Lance Stevenson is LA's hot new Zumba instructor. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Lance Nickham Dance, aka Sir Lance. I got this new workout plan where you can get your weight down, you can feel good about yourself. Now, let's get it. All right, I'm buying it. Lance is going to make us dance. We're going to lose weight. We're going to have some fun. He's got moves. Sure. Oh, basketball moves. Yeah, we're bringing the basketball <laughs> theme into it. <laughs> Feeling it? And now uh, Hezzy. Now Hezzy. Now Hezzy. <laughs> and, and the people really seem to love it. I actually uh, lost about 150 pounds on the Sir Lance Lots workout plan, so I highly recommend it. Uh, I actually lost it over just the course of two weeks. Sir Lancelot, he's the greatest teacher of dance of all time. Wow, I'm buying it. 12.95. Okay. Ben Simmons has never hit a three-pointer in an NBA game, so when footage surfaced this week of Ben knocking some down in shoot-around, well, at Oprah's side couldn't help but drop this remix. Ben Simmons. At number one, James Harden step back, step back travel that wasn't called. Well, of course it's gonna get me. <laughs> People love step backs. Yo, dog, I heard you like step backs. So James Harden had a step back to a step back. Now you can watch step back right after a step back. The master impersonator, Brandon Armstrong, B. A. Dot. Dude, doing the Harden. Russell Westbrook, if you remember, he did this in the summer right beside James Harden. Harden is right there watching him do an impression of him at USA Basketball. And uh, you know how far James Harden travels? All around the world. Uh, <laughs> through security, picked up his bags. Nice. <laughs> what a vacation. Maybe on TNT doing a great job. Oh, Bobby. Every little step I take. Wow. Just dancing with Bobby. They're not that little. Yeah. <laughs> Big old steps. But nice Bobby Brown dance moves there. Catchy. 
Great addition of the meme team. All right, when we come back, Lily hits us with a very solid play. Tonight on TNT, it's the Rockets in Miami to take on the Heat, followed by the Mavericks and Clippers. You know we'll be watching, but we asked you earlier in the show, what's the weirdest NBA headwear you can remember? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got some answers. Yeah, a bunch of good suggestions. Number one, though, it's got to be yep. the D-band. Apparently that paid well back in the day. Enzo suggests Lonnie Walker's floating draft cap. That was an amazing moment. And Sam points out that the Hornets hat wasn't the only time this meets his worn a hat. Oh, it's a good look. The silly string from Summer League. Stringed up. Good call, Sam. All right, tonight's pick and play. Lee, you're going to need this one. Yeah. Wow, you really need this one. <laughs> or it's over. Because uh, we're on vacation after Friday. Sweet. For the most part. So look, there it is. You got the heat. Everybody else got the Rockets. Good luck. Uh, very solid play. Who gets it? Uh, well, good news for the Indiana Pacers. Two losses, but they win back-to-back -back very solid plays. That ball is fizzing around, so there's nothing really wrong with their offense, I would say, right now. Here it is. Uh, now, Bogey, just don't take that dribble. Just fire it away. It would have been perfect, but it's still good. It's still beautiful. Here we go again. Is this the one that put them up 17? Like when midway through the Maybe, third quarter? Maybe, yeah. yeah. They were up big. Yeah, they were up huge, and that's what I call a very solid play. Very solid play to a very solid wedgie. Number 13 of the season, the rare point yeah. guard block wedgie. This point guard on point guard action here. Russ gets by De'Aaron Fox, but he recovers. Oh, fast so enough De to Fox recover. Is faster. Ah. Interesting. Who is faster? The old debate. Happy birthday again to De'Aaron Fox. That's 13 wedgies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well. We actually have another wedgie. What? Now, I'm not sure if this one counts because it comes from the Australian National Basketball League, and there is a little starters tie in here for us. Jared Kenny off target, and we've got a wedgie. <laughs> Shout out to the starters who are all out watching. Shout out to Lee Ellis over there, who's a big fan of the National Basketball League. Oh, Andrew Bogut dislodged the wedgie, so does that count? Former no, NBA player, NBA count, champ? No, doesn't count. Tomorrow, though, it's Friday. <laughs> we'll have a new drop podcast for you. Final podcast, drop podcast, of 2018. So keep your eyes and ears for that one. And uh, coming up on Wednesday, December 26th, the day after Christmas, it's the starters season in review. Looking back at the best dunks of the season so far, best blocks, best memes, best very solid plays even. Wow. So it's an action-packed show, always a blast. Premieres Wednesday, December 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern. That's it for us tonight. We'll see you uh, with the Drop Podcast and here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Eastern. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. It has been a blast. And remember, uh, this guy, he does some crazy things. This guy over here. This guy. He does some crazy things like Couldn't be pop me. out of a poinsettia. <laughs> oh! Hey, the poinsettia pop. <laughs> when did you guys do that? <laughs> oh, you know, just having fun in the greenhouse. Oh, cool. <laughs> Embrace the night, people.